Thank you to overcome the defilements and uh, any more? Any more? How it can uh, benefit both ourselves and others? If we practice kindness and compassion. Yeah, so thing. As you know, I study psychology. For your information, when we attend the class, listen to the talk, right? So by merely hearing, we this will come into our short-term memory. Yeah. Because when we listen after the class, grab hands, wow, okay, very inspiring, but after that you will forget. Yeah. If we provoke our thought during the talk, during the talk, so <coughs> this seed will plant deeper in our memory. So when we reflect and think you know, during the talk, you will keep this in the long-term memory. Uh, and when we practice, this will become our own habit. So this will follow us life after life. Yeah. That's why I like to ask the question. And as I say, there is no right or wrong answer. But we must make ourselves think. So this all thought is our own knowledge. And slowly, it gradually, this, this will become our wisdom. All right. So the importance of kindness and compassion and how it can benefit both ourselves and others. But we must think. I will tell you my answer, but that is belong to me. Yeah. So we must think and find out the answer for ourselves. Right. So they are essential for it is very important. It is very important. These are two of the most important virtues in the Buddhist practice because they are the essential for achieving inner peace. Inner peace. When we have inner peace, then only can overcome the defilements. Right? So inner peace and also happiness. Yeah. We want to achieve happy. Everyone wants to live happily. And also the spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. Right. So by developing the kindness and the compassion, we can overcome the negative emotion as well. Right. So when we uh, overcome the negative emotion, such as the negative emotion, I think every day we experience that. Example, what negative emotion we have? Anger, yes. And frustration, and resentment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything complain. Huh? Sorry? Regret, Regret yes. Guilt, Guilt. and Sorry? Fear. Fear. All right. And? Anxiety, impatient, and? Hatred. Oh, one more, last one, but it's quite common. Jealousy. Yes, jealousy. <laughs> quite common, yeah? Jealousy. So all these that you uh, share, they are the uh, negative emotion, right? So we can uh, overcome this negative emotion. The other side, so that when we overcome the negative emotion, then we can cultivate the positive or quality emotion, right? So the positive or quality emotion, they are, example, sorry? Kindness, compassion, and other than kindness and compassion, but we want to practice kindness and compassion, but the emotion for the 
positive forgiveness yes contentment all right understanding all right okay tolerance yes acceptance yes patience all right yes okay through this we can have do our own self-reflection these two questions like what pop up in your mind more negative emotion you can tell me more negative emotion than the positive emotion the quality emotion correct or not so this means we have negative in psychological way we have negative emotion or we experience negative emotion more than the positive emotion right so this is uh, what we know from uh, this moment right you might say no that's not true i live happily i always feel grateful yeah but sometimes we do not discover yeah, what is our insight, uh, our inner part, or our thought? Yeah, in uh, in in the deeper part. So now we want to overcome the negative emotion and develop or cultivate the positive uh, emotion. Right, and what's why important? to practice the kindness and compassion because it's also hold the immense to transform the transform, uh, transformative power for ourselves and the world around us, right? No, not only for ourselves, but you can see this will influence our surrounding, our surrounding, right? And by embodying this kindness and compassion, we can unlock the potential to live in the harmony with others and we call radiating. Yeah. So you imagine when we practice kindness and compassion, we have a shout of the radiation. This can protect ourselves from the uh, negative emotion or the influence of frequency. And also, we can shine to others, the person or anything around us, yeah, including the environment as well. Right. So... My late master, Venerable Master Singh, always uh, taught us that um, this is the practice to practice kindness and compassion. This is not only for the uh, for the what is it? Oh, when we have this class, then let's practice. And then after this class, we already forget because we don't have class. So we don't need to practice. Uh, and there's no meditation. So I, because I, we must practice meditation in the meditation hall, but there's no meditation class. So I don't know how to practice kindness and compassion. And we practice, we learn to be, how to be kindness and compassion only in the class. No, this is not only at this moment in the classroom or in the meditation hall, but this is in our daily life. And this is not for a short period, but this is for our whole life. Yeah, every minute, every minute. So now, if by nurturing our self-compassion and the understanding, we can develop the capacity to extend the genuine uh, care and empathy towards others. 
right? So this inner transformation allows us to break free from the confine of the self-centeredness. Yeah, everyone has a self-centered, right? However, we must break through yeah, this uh, chain or these uh, obstacles right? and embrace the broader perspective, uh, perspective to uh, recognizing the interconnectedness of all beings. This is very important. Why? We are not living alone yeah, in this world. Everything interrelated. Interrelated. For example, I just came back from Pakistan. Yeah, I, as I share with uh, Jackie, uh, she asked me about the Pakistan. So, uh, lately, Fukuan San Education Center signed a memorandum of agreement with one of the top university in Pakistan, Kwadaizam University, to set up the Humanistic Buddhism Research Center in the university. So why I say we are called assistant? Before this, I know that their political uh, situation is unstable. Yeah. And they, you can see, uh, of course, Taliban <laughs> is one of the threats and very uh, fearful thing you know, for, for us because they uh, can attack. Yeah and they can throw the bomb <laughs> to any place at any time right before that i think well okay this is none of our business because so far right pakistan and then we are in the malaysia yeah. and their political situation not relevant or not related to our country as well yeah when I went there, they also said, hey, our country very safe, not to worry, because Taliban just a very small group of, uh, of them, and we are a very peaceful uh, people. And of course, uh, they granted that the safety is not the problem, and then I go there not for uh, the political activity or religious activity, but the academic platform. Yeah, I go to the university. And it just happened that their prime minister, their ex prime minister, being caught on the day I, that we arrive. <laughs> so, but it is nothing to do with me, right? So I say, okay, well, we will be safe. And our counterpart say, okay, you will be safe, right now, but don't worry. You know, we will protect you and ensure your safety. You know, it's true, I'm safe, we are safe. However, you know what? They brought all the routes from airport. I want to go back to the hotel. It takes me a few hours. In fact, it is just 45 minutes drive, a few hours, because everywhere bought. This is the first thing. And then we go with two cars, you know? We cannot communicate with each other because this robot, uh, the driver want to call. Hey, uh, where shall we go? Uh, and turn left or right uh, or U-turn. Uh, they cannot because why? They cut off all the communication because they afraid they uh, the Taliban or the activists. Uh, they will communicate further yeah, to uh, do the this strike or uh, react. Uh, and something like that. So we see in the car, even though we are safe, yeah, ex prime means nothing to do with me, but I also stuck in the uh, road. Yeah, just round and round and round and round and for two hours. <laughs> yeah. So we are called assistants. Huh? And uh, right, okay, come back to this topic. Yeah. Now, Whenever Master Senior also say, because one day one of uh, the venerables asked, is the sentient beings are very difficult, Master? Because I keep telling them and teaching all the class meditation, however, in my 
temple, this uh, a bit outskirt. Huh? In this temple, because the villagers, they are not educated. So when I conduct the class, they don't really understand. And when I want to uh, teach them the meditation, how to calm down, they also cannot sit still, right? Such been very difficult. I can I I, I don't know how to uh, make the situation better so that they can uh, can live more happier. And then the master say, "Well, you cannot demand others to change their habit and attitude overnight, right? So cultivating must begins with." Ourself begins with ourselves. Why and how? Now we can uh, draw further, yeah, understand further why kindness and compassion must begin with ourselves. All right. First of all, uh, let us understand the kindness and compassion. Kindness and compassion are the pillars of moral virtue. Yeah, moral hold a significant place in the heart of Buddhist practice. And anyone can tell me kindness and compassion, what are the difference? <coughs> Any differences? Any differences? We must define first. You know, when we learn one thing, you know, this is uh before we understand and practice, this is the Buddhist terminology. Um, this is not the Dharma. So, kindness is an action. And compassion? Okay, emotion. All right. Any more? Any more? Okay, now kindness in Pali we call metta, metta, right? So this uh, refers to genuine goodwill and benevolence that arise from the depth of our beings. So this is kindness, metta. And uh, this, it is an all-encompassing love and care, right? love and care towards towards all beings not only for ourselves but for all beings right irrespective of their backgrounds or circumstances races or even uh, religion so we must uh, have this kindness treat them with kindness and compassion, compassion in Pali, compassion in Pali is karuna. So this goes beyond kindness. Compassion goes beyond kindness, right? So it represents the deep empathy and concern that we feel for those who are suffering and accompanied by an earnest desire to elevate their pain and bring them to the good condition or in the comfort way. So compassion is further or beyond the kindness. So in in fact that that is right. Compassion is with the action. Okay. So in Buddhist practice, kindness and compassion it is not only the concept and uh, roughy idea, but rather trans uh, transformative forces. Remember transformative uh, forces that shape shape our thought, shape our words, shape our action. Yes. 
shape our action. So these are the keys to uh, unlocking our innate capacity of this unconditional love. For it is through the cultivation that we awaken our true nature and forge a path towards liberation and enlightenment. So that's why it's very important to practice kindness and compassion. Right. And now let us discuss the difference between empathy and compassion and why it is important to cultivate both between empathy and compassion. So as you can see from the slide, empathy and compassion, they are often used interchangeably, right? But they hold distinct meaning. They are different. They are different. Empathy is the ability to understand and uh, share the feeling of others. So this is empathy. It's the ability to understand and share the feeling of others. Empathy allows us to put ourselves in someone else's shoes to experience their joy or sorrows or all the feelings and to relate to their experiences. This is empathy. Relate to our experiences. We experience others' joys and sorrows and to relate yeah, in our experiences and their experiences. And the other hand, compassion takes empathy a step further. Take a step further. Compassion involves not only understanding the suffering and the joy of others, but also actively seeking to elevate it. Compassion compels us to take compassionate action to extend um, our helping hand and make a positive differences in the life of others. So this is the differences. And Master Sing Yun always uh, told us that the importance of cultivating both empathy and compassion. While empathy helps us connect with others on a deep emotional level, compassion motivates us to transform that connection into meaningful action. Sometimes we are very confusing, right? Empathy, compassion, kindness. So now if we learn from the book, now we break into a smaller pieces of understanding so that you will be aware what you are doing. Then you can bring one step forward to achieve the meaning or the objective of to become compassionate. Sometimes we merely show our empathy. Yeah. That is not compassion. So we must do one step further. So that are the differences we must, uh, we must know. Okay. So by nurturing the empathy, it's very important because when Master Singh told us we must practice, uh, cultivate both. By nurturing the empathy, we can develop a genuine understanding of the challenges uh, faced by others and also fostering a sense of shared humanity. Yeah. So by nurturing the empathy. And through the compassion, we bridge the gap between understanding and the action. We understand through empathy, but we must act. Yeah. So compassion bridge the gap between understanding and action and turning our empathy into tangible action of 
kindness and support. Right. So throughout Buddhist teaching and the story, we find profound uh, examples of the kindness and compassion expressed in various forms. The story of the Buddhist Sabha Avalokiteshvara, right, the embodiment of compassion, uh, exemplified this virtue. Right. So anyone can think of any story of uh, Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva. Think this story is will be very important to you, and you will surprisingly, this story will help you and guide you in your life. Think one of the story that, or uh, not only from our Gedesora Bodhisattva, maybe from any Buddhas or Bodhisattva, when you think of this story, you will think of compassion. Think. If you don't have any, please read more and find one <laughs> yeah, for yourself. Yeah. Believe me, this is very important. Everything I tell you, I, actually I'm leading you step by step to build up your own kindness, empathy and compassion. So you might not truly understand through one class, but this is like just a foundation. Uh, we planted the seed so that when you came across this in your life, in your experience, this will gradually uh, develop yeah, the kindness and the compassion uh, in ourselves. Right. So the Avalokiteshvara actually driven by his deep compassion for all beings, right? And he hears their cries of suffering and uh, tirelessly respond to their pleas for help. So he hears their cries of suffering and he will attend and help those who uh, uh, suffer and please for help. So the Avarapadeswara stories remind us that the compassion is not limited by time or space, but transcend all the boundaries to reach out to those in need. Yeah. So there are many stories from Avarapadeswara, Buddhisattva. In this Saha world, we are more uh, connected to this Bodhisattva. Of course, there are more Bodhisattva that you can um, find from the Sutra. Yeah. So you can learn from them as well. But however, by remembering the story easier than remember the Sutra. Yeah. So that's why I ask you, is there any story of the Bodhisattva can help you remind the compassion practice yeah, or the thought. So um, now, the examples of how kindness and compassion have been expressed in the Buddhist teaching and the uh, story, not only from the our Gedesora Bodhisattva, in another teaching, the Buddha himself emphasizes the power of kindness and compassion through the practice of the four immeasurables. What are the four immeasurables? Think. Don't, don't feel embarrassed or shy or bad. Yeah? This question, actually, I'm not seeking you to answer me the right question, but I just want to promote your thought. Yeah, we must, I think we all attended so many classes. So that's why <laughs> we hear from the left ear and come up from the right ear. So, <laughs> so now, every time we want to 
thick, deep inside in our Raya consciousness, we have been planted this seed. Uh, what is for immeasurable? So try to take out so that this will become our long-term memory and uh, this serve as a reminder as well. Okay, for immeasurables, they are loving kindness, compassion, empathetic joy, and also equanimity. Remember, right? We always uh, recite this as well. So the four immeasurables serve as the guiding compass, directing our heart towards boundless love. Right. So this unwavering compassion, genuine joy for other success and a balanced equanimity that embraces all beings with impartiality. So the four immeasurables serve as the guiding compass. When we study four immeasurables, so this is the guidelines yeah, for us to cultivate, to develop the kindness and compassion. And from these teachings, the stories of the Buddha or Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva and the four immeasurables teaching, we learn that kindness and compassion are not abstract concepts, but living principle that can be embodied and cultivated in our life. So they are the foundation upon which a harmonious society can flourish. And they hold the potential to transform our world into the realm of peace, understanding and unity. We don't need to wait until we die, go to the pure land. No? We can create the pure land in our world now and here by practicing kindness and compassion. And come back again, the same question. I cannot, I treat other people very kind, very compassionate, but I cannot control others treat me back. How? Again, back to you. What Rambo Master Singing told us, the practice begins our self. And then when we practice kindness and compassion, that is a show over us, not only protect ourselves from the negative emotion, but also influence the radiation can shine on others with the positive emotion. All right. So um, we have already uh, finished the understanding of kindness and compassion. Now, the following segment, we shall explore the practical methods uh, and the technique for integrating the kindness and compassion into our daily practice. But, okay, the words are a bit small. Yeah. Now, my, uh, just listen to me. Now, we want to discuss the practical way to develop the kindness and compassion in our daily life, such as what? How you practice the compassion and kindness? You have your own way, perhaps, to practice the kindness and compassion. Anyone mind to share? How? How we practice? Okay, now um, we can practice our our uh, compassion, okay, and kindness through meditation and mindfulness and compassionate action. 
Right. To truly develop kindness and compassion, we must embark on the journey of self-transformation first. Self-transformation. On uh, one of the most powerful tools in this transformation journey is meditation. Is meditation. Through meditation, we cultivate a state of what calmness. We can feel that. Right, we can calm down through meditation and also what with our clarity that enables us to connect with our innermost self. We can connect with ourselves when we practice meditation. Right. And tap into the well, what spring of love and compassion that reside within us so by dedicating regular time to do the meditation we create the space for kindness and compassion to blossom so meditation very important we must spare our time perhaps every day in order to create this space for the kindness and uh, compassion to grow, yeah, to blossom. And meditation guiding us, guiding our thought, our word and action towards the well-being of ourselves and others. Yeah, through our thought, words and action. Okay, another thing, another practice, mindfulness. So this is a Another essential practice act as the compass in our pursuit of kindness and compassion. Yeah? So by being fully present or present in the moment when we practice mindfulness, present, be present in the moment and we develop an acute awareness in our thought if we practice mindfulness. And also, not only acute awareness of our thought, but emotion as well, and interaction with others. Right. So this awareness allows us to consciously choose kindness and compassion in our response and reaction, rather than coming into unconscious pattern of reactively uh, uh, reactivity of our self-centeredness right mindfulness enables us to see the interconnectedness of all beings and empower us to extend the genuine care and understanding to those around us how mindfulness can help us meditation is one of the practice in mindfulness, right? To calm down, as I said just now. But how mindfulness can transform us or ask us to uh, create the awareness, how to respond in the interaction with others. Right? I, anyone attended mindfulness course before? No? Right. Okay, then uh, let me tell you uh, further uh, about mindfulness. Mindfulness, to practice, we live at present. Okay. Can you observe ourselves when you are sitting here? Right. Your thought, yeah. maybe not in the class. When you sit here, you would think about, oh yeah, so this morning I didn't take breakfast. I now feel a bit hungry. Yeah. <laughs> or later after class, uh, what shall I do? Uh? So I what shall I cook uh, for my kids or for my family? Uh, or you think about uh, yeah, tomorrow uh, any words uh, uh, pending you need to settle. So we think of the past and also future, but not in the present, in, but not in the present. So, if we are not living in the present, meaning we are what wasting our time, 
we are wasting our life. You physically here, but our thought wandering around, wandering around. Right. So we we can grab our mind back to at this moment, how to feel that when we sit, we know we are sitting. When we listening, we know okay what is the vulnerables talking about. So that is living at the present. When we living at the present, meaning we can focus. We can focus. When we focus through the Dharma that we learned before, like just now we learned how to develop the compassion and the kindness, right? right. We can break the chain of what tendency habit that we brought forward from our previous life. You know, now we have many uh, habits uh, actually unaware that we will react and do it yeah, unintentionally, but that is the habit. Some develop through this life, but some we bring forward, we brought forward from our pre previous life. Okay, for example, when um, car accident, right? Car accident, your bumper hit by the car behind. What, what, what would you feel? The first reaction or feeling or emotion? Angry, you feel angry. Because it's not your fault, right? I, I am the very good driver. I keep the uh, reasonable distance and I also obey the traffic rules. But all of a sudden, I don't know, a blind one uh, hit <laughs> on me at the back. And then I would think, okay, wow, I need to spend for the repairs already. And then first thought, very angry. Uh, and then second, this is not my fault. <laughs> uh, third, I must fight for the calm, yeah, the right and also the compensation. Right. So the first reaction, this is our own habit. Then you get up from the car and start to argue with the driver behind. Right. So this will become a what? Arguing or debating case already. So of course I I'm, I'm I, I should not pay for the repair and then I should I must claim your insurance and blah 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 blah. And then the other the other one will say, okay, you just press the brake, yeah suddenly so i don't have time to 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 break that's why i hit on you this is our first reaction however when we able to practice mindfulness we able to press the pause button you know don't say anything don't act first stop and think so practice mindfulness is enable us to press the button and then we think, oh, what I learned from the class huh, about kindness and compassion, what Buddha taught, yeah, we must calm, okay, how to calm. Now when I practice meditation, I take three deep breaths. Ah, calm down. Okay, calm down already. Yeah. And then, what shall I do next? The action. I must speak good words. Uh, the words with kind and compassion. Not pointing other people and say, this is your fault, not my fault. Right? Yeah. So, the situation will become better. Right? So, the situation will become better. The first thought is, okay, anyone injured or not yeah, in my car if I have any passenger, right? Or the, the other party, any injured. So we must 
settle our emotion first. Settle our emotion first. So the mindfulness enable us to press the pause button, think, then only react. Settle our own negative emotion, then only react accordingly. All right. So this is the uh, mindfulness. And now we want we practice to the meditation and mindfulness so that we can practice in our just how we said we want to press the post button, right? Okay, and remind us how should we act? Everything we do must be the good one. Right? Okay? So do good deeds. When we speak, must be good words. Yeah. If negative words, you must pause and say, Oi, this one cannot, uh, vulgar words or uh, bad words, all this cannot, you know, Buddha say cannot. So speak good words. And then when we act, good action, and when we speak good words after that, we must have good thought, good thought. Good thought. When we purify our body, mouth, and minds through practicing the do good deeds, speak good words, and have good thoughts. So this is three acts of goodness. Very important. Okay. So mindfulness and meditation enable us to act, you know, to think, and to speak in the positive or the good way. And now, how to extend this kindness and compassion to difficult situation or difficult people? Yeah. These are the uh, situation uh, or the environment that we always uh, face, right? So by cultivating kindness and compassion, it's not confined to the uh, solitude of meditation or a quiet moment because when we practice meditation wow very calm very peace uh, because no one disturbs us uh, in the meditation hall very nice but you get up from the cushion go out while wow, you can see many challenges you know, the people around us the environment around us uh, very difficult very challenging right? so not only the quiet moment of uh, mindfulness, but it is important to manifest these virtues to compassionate action. So small act of kindness, such as uh, lending a helping hand, offering kind word, uh, as we say, and practicing active listening. Yeah. So this all practices have a power to create the profile positive uh, power drive in the life of others, right? So by consciously seeking opportunity to be of service to others, and we align our action with our aspiration and contribute to a more compassionate world. So this is how we can extend this to the difficult situation and people. However, the true test of our capacity uh, for the kindness and compassion lies in our ability to extend them to difficult people and challenging situation, right? So when we face with the, this uh, hostility or negativity, it is natural for our initial response to be defensive. And or uh, confrontation, confrontational, right? Yet, uh, Buddha reminds us that even in such circumstances, the kindness and compassion can serve as transformative tools by approaching difficult diff uh, individuals, people, situation with understanding, passion, and open heart, and an open heart. So, we can create the space for what? Healing and reconciliation. Right. It is essential to remember that behind 
the amour of hostility often lies pain, fear, or what? Or suffering. Yeah, worry. So through empathy and compassion, we can seek to address those underlying causes and path the way for understanding and resolution. We must understand the 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 the, the pain lies behind, the fear lies behind. Yeah, this uh, difficult situation and difficult people. Okay, now anyone can share any tips uh, with our Dharma friends here for overcoming the obstacles to cultivating the kindness and compassion, such as uh, anger or resentment. What is your practice? Do you have any way to, to overcome this? Perhaps you can share and think. If you don't have any, don't worry, but must think. We think. Tips or action or a method for overcoming. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah. I think the listening. The pause button, right? So, but how, how do you do that? Okay, thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing very well. Okay, any more? Yes. Congratulations to both of you. You already found the way how to uh, press the pause button and to cultivate the kindness and compassion. Yeah, very good. Any others? Yeah. If you're very shy to share, it, it's okay, but uh, you must keep in your heart right, how, to, um, how to practice and how to press the pause button. And uh, for our sister here, this is the practice of mindfulness. You act as an observer, not to don't take this too personal, right? Yeah. So this is my not really direct, yeah, related to you or this 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 person not really want to um but want to scold you or say backwards, but this is his or her 
own feeling and emotion yeah, that he or her must express. Yeah, but it just happened you stand in front of this person. <laughs> so uh, he or she just pray <laughs> on you. Right. So you just trigger <laughs> the, the, the negative emotion. Very good. So you observe your own emotion or other people's emotion as the observer. This is the practice of mindfulness as a third party observer. If you can see your own emotion, you can see others' emotion. Yeah. Then you can decide how to react and respond. Yeah. However, most of us, most of us, you know, the our brain, uh, the development, okay, when there are so many paths, I call path, of course, that is the uh, synopass or the nerve uh, that we uh, use to use. You can see from the MRI, the part in our brain that is active, it will, it will, the path uh, or the nerve or the vein will become thicker. That is the path that you use more often. Like we drive the car, we drive the car. I think when from your home to your workplace, it will become autopilot already, right? You never think <laughs> which route to pursue and then which way to go. Automatically, when you wake up, when you get in the car again, ooh, start engine and then reverse and then go turn left, turn right, uh, pass the toll. And so this is the routine, but this become autopilot already. You never have second thought yeah, to do another, uh, try another route. So this is how our brain develops. The more often you use, the wider the route, the, the path that it is. So when we retrieve information and into your action, this will be the fastest and easiest way. Yeah. So the route or the path that we select is the negative one or the positive one is the matter. So when we always use the root of the negative one, so the e negative emotion will come, come up first. Negative action will come up first. That's why we need to practice. And while we want to practice, the post moment is very important because the post moment is for us to make decision and select another path. Yeah. When the anger arises already, oh, I know, wow, my anger emotion. Right. Then next, how to react? Yeah. So this is the most important function of practicing mindfulness yeah, for us to press the pause button. Yeah. Very good. So others, you can think. Yeah. So we must analyze and break into this in the small, small pieces so that we can know ourselves better and we can look into our own emotion, our the process of thinking. Yeah, the process of thinking. You can slow down and pause and then we can make a new decision, not following the, our tendency habit to react or interact again and again. So that's why we call transformative. We can transform the negative one to the positive one through this practice. All right. Okay. Any more sharing? <laughs> when um when we are unable to press that pause button, and it happens, mm -hmm. 
And then I think it's important also to do a reflection later on and see what could be done better. Mm -hmm. Because many times I think, um, as you mentioned, you know, that, that's the most easiest way and, and that's so reactive that we always, you know, just, just react the way we yes. used to. Yeah. And then um, the reflection part will come later mm -hmm. if we are unable to pause mm -hmm. and yeah. see whether we could have done things in a more um, better manner. Mm -hmm. And if it were to happen again, how would could we do it differently? Mm, yeah, very yeah, good. I think if that is able to come up more often, then the pause button may be um, achievable mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. prior to it happening. Oh, thanks for sharing. Very good. Thank so you. one step further, if we are unable to press the pause button, but we do the reflection after that, so that is the awareness as well. Even though we cannot change immediately, but gradually when we do the reflection of what can be done in a better way, right? So this will keep remind us. So next time, how shall I react? Uh, in the similar situation. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Hi. Um, just sharing my mm. experience. Yes. Um, whenever I need to, um, if I know that I will be attending a meeting mm. where I will meet uh, people who will Very challenging um, share people. their grievances, for example, sometimes there are complaints that will be coming or uh, certain, uh, certain people who might be very reactive. And then I will usually uh, know a hit and prepare a hit and um, spend some quiet time to do meta meditation. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I find that it's very uh, useful. Uh, when I do meta meditation, uh, it, it gives a lot of kindness to, to um, the person and also to the whole meeting room or mm -hmm. the whole hall or something. Mm -hmm. And then um, it also helps to to connect to the person because mm -hmm. during the meta meditation, we are actually connecting to the person and giving them compassion. And, and, and during that med meta meditation, we understand that they are trying to be happy, actually. Mm -hmm. They are finding, they're trying their best to find happiness. And uh, even though it, it looks like it's suffering. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I will enter the meeting with a uh, different uh, frame of mind and different lenses so when I see them mm. um, and when I listen to them uh, complaining or uh, trying to solve their problem it, it's actually uh, it, it's really different compared to if I was just entering it uh, a meeting without any preparation ah. so that's my shame thank yeah you. thank you thank you so when you face you foresee you face a difficult situation or people so you will prepare yourself to the meta meditation yes very good thank you as i say when we have the uh, meta or compassion or kindness that is a show around us so this can protect ourselves and protect others and or even uh, we the, this radiation can uh, spread to other people. Yes, any more? Mm. So we learn from others' experience and practices. Uh, thanks for sharing. This is the uh, Dharma offering as well. Yeah, yes, brother. Thank you very much, uh, Dan on huh? okay uh, very interesting topic kindness and compassion meta meta was actually translated slightly different by another venerable as a universal benevolence universal benevolence as opposed to loving kindness apparently it has got a wider meaning and it applies to all sentient beings yes my question here is, uh, it's, it's actually not a sharing of experiences, but mm -hmm. a question. If I were to buy a bird that is caught by someone and then release it as an act of compassion or a, a fish or whatever, any, any other sentient beings and release it as an act of compassion or kindness, is that act uh, acceptable in Buddhism? Or is it a foolish act, uh, unwise act? Maybe i listen to your comments and then maybe I'll follow up with another question. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what is in your thought 
at that moment when you do this action? The Why? Thought, what makes you the make thought this? is to release uh, the captive animal mm. so that it is no longer captive, so mm. that it's back to nature. Yeah, that's the thought. Mm. Uh, so if everybody were to have the same thought, then of course uh, there'll be a lot more animals or, or sentient beings that would be released to the wild. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's that? What are your thoughts on it? All right. So at the present moment, very important. So your initial thought, what makes you want to take that action is the matter. So based on due to the compassion or the kindness practice, you think I must buy and release. So you already serve the purpose of practice compassion right, at that moment. You know, so this is uh, a, a good action. Right, so you already planted a good deed, yeah, due to your compassion. However, if we want to see the situation around, is that the tourist spot that um, to do the business for the tourists to buy the captive birds or fish, and then uh, let you to fulfill your own desire to be compassion. <laughs> then we must think twice already because this action will create more opportunity to the, to the merchandiser or the seller or, or the person yeah, to catch more <laughs> birds or fish for you to buy and release. You know, that's why right. sometimes compassion with wisdom, but it is not in our topic, is very important. Compassion with wisdom is very important as well. But nothing right or wrong as long as at that moment you decide, oh, okay, I feel bad. I must do this. Yeah, in order to release the uh, life, then you have already uh, served the purpose of practicing or doing uh, this uh, kind action or compassion action. Right. Uh, the, the reason why I, <clears throat> I brought this up is usually uh, on festive occasions like visa, things like that. Uh, there are more animals that is caught to be released. So if Buddhists continue to practice that, then more animals will be caught and more animals will probably be dead also because yes. when you catch them, they are yes. not so easy to be caught. Yes. And that links up with the food that we eat. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was in Basti, uh, Theravadians can eat meat because it says, after all, the animal is dead. Whether you eat it or not, it's already dead. So, but the Mahayanis, they don't eat meat because there's compassion. Because they, they look at it be, beyond that meat on, on the table. If you don't consume meat, of course the animal wouldn't be caught and wouldn't be killed. So what is your stand on this? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank uh, you. Thanks for the question. So I know anyone uh, practice this releasing <laughs> the live birds or the fish? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Uh, uh, you're right. So if we um, practice more relief live, and then the uh, the business will be uh, getting better and better, right? And more. Um, life will be captured or caught yeah, for this purpose to fulfill our so-called ceremony or our wish to release life and pray for the longevity or any good thing yeah, back to us. Yeah. That's why uh, Venerable Master Sing Yun told us that instead of releasing life is more important 
to protect life. To protect life. Yeah. So we don't encourage, catch the, uh, or buy uh, the birds or fish and release. Yeah. Sometimes you might not aware uh, you release life or release death because these living beings, they might live in certain environment and condition, right? The birds, they have their own, uh, own environment and ecosystem. Yeah. The fish you catch from the river, but you want to release in the pond, different environment. Yeah. So they might not able to survive. Yeah. Furthermore, during the journey or during the delivering or path, uh, so many more lives already taken that and left those for you to buy and release. So in the whole process, uh, there are many lives might be affected or already taken away. Yeah. So this is not a, a good practice yeah, in uh, our point of view. That's why instead of Mirabai Master singing, say, instead of releasing life, why don't we protect life? How to protect life? Anyone? How to protect life? To answer your question, be the vegetarian. One of the good practice practices. Okay, what else? How to protect life? How to protect life? We take five precepts, right? Not killing is protecting life. It is very important. It is useless, meaningless, while we release the birds and the fishes, the turtle or whatever, but at the same time, we are not mindfully to kill the insects <laughs> no? or the animals. Uh, so this is meaningless, right? Mm -hmm. So we shall protect the life through not killing and also become the vegetarian. Yeah, very good. And about the different tradition, yeah, they allowed to eat meat or not. Uh, okay, then I encourage all of you um, can uh, study the history of the Buddhism. They are reason behind and more relevant to the life and environment and also the situation at that point of time. Why Theravada monk or during Buddha's time, you know, the eat meat, right? But the eating of meat at that time and now, they are totally different. Different. Yeah, with different mind and different uh, situation. Yeah. During the Buddha's time, they, because whatever the sanction beings offer, they accept due to the kindness and compassion. And also they want to create the affinities to spread the Dharma and let the sanction beings plant the good seed. So, all the karma or the action by consuming the meat, this can be overcome through the compassionate practice by the Buddha. This is called or the arahat. This, the, the action that the did this neutral karma. Neutral karma. Yeah. Bad karma and good karma, it will produce a effect, good or 
bad effects, right? Neutral karma, it won't bring any good or bad effects. Uh, this is first thing. Second thing, the environment at that time of the, so the devotees or the lay person, they will offer the best thing from their life or household offer to the Buddha and offer to the Sangha, right? So at that, at that point of time, and also in the uh, Chinese tradition, uh, the Chinese monk, they wouldn't go out for the arm bowing. Yeah, why? And the uniform also different. Why? Anyone? Think. You guess. Arm bowing actually is already the tradition or the culture in the India. But when the Buddhism spread or transmit to China in the Chinese culture or tradition. Uh, Wu Aming actually is like the biker, right? In their tradition, uh, the biker only arm for food in Chinese. Yeah. So it wouldn't work. They wouldn't, they wouldn't respect the Sangha if you act like the biker. This is one of the reasons. And also, why the uniform different? This in China, the winter, right? So if we bear one shoulder, right? Your shoulder will drop, <laughs> your arms will drop. <laughs> so, and also the, 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 the design, yeah? So this has been localized. You see, but one good, good thing for, uh, about the Buddhism, the Buddhism will localize easily, adapt into the life of the lay person or the sentient beings in that country. Yeah. So that's why we have Chinese Buddhism, Korean Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism, so many Buddhism, because this all has been localized. And Western side, that Buddhism practice also different. But we all go back to learn the true meaning of the Buddha's teaching, which is the Dharma, the truth of the universe. That is very important. But however, due to the different interpretation from different generation, from different times and period, some of the truth of the Dharma teaching or the Buddha's teaching misinterpreted. Misinterpreted. That's why Prabhupada Master Singh promote humanistic Buddhism because want to let the Buddhism back to the human world. And also we want to back, we want to understand the Dharma according to the original intent of the Buddha. So uh, this is process. You can see from the history, there are many changes or transformation due to the different condition. Yeah. So impermanence, that is the universal law. Uh -huh. So we need to change accordingly. However, we must not out of the track yeah, of our path. Yeah, the Eightfold Path, that is very important. Okay. All right. Um, did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah. So actually, we cannot label, ah, Theravada can eat meat. No, now many of them, they, uh, the vegetarian already. So that is maybe the tradition and culture inherited from, from the past, but due to the different... Uh, uh, era, new, not new era, different environment. So we can get the vegetarian uh, food easily. Like for example, in Tibet, in uphill, it's very hard to get vegetable. So what they eat, right? So these are the only uh, food you know, they can consume. That's why they eat meat. Yeah. But like 
Wherever Master Sinhin also say, we change and cultivate. Begins with ourselves. Begin with ourselves. Ourself. Yeah, don't compare because we are in the different condition and different situation. Right? Yeah. So in this environment, when the condition permitted allowed us to be vegetarian, then this is your choice. Want to become the vegetarian or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then this is uh, our uh, practice. This is our practice. But first of all, the five precepts. Yeah, as a fundamental guideline to become a good human beings. Yeah, that is the fundamental one. So we uphold the five precepts. Yeah, every day. Then gradually you will you, you you will become a better person, yeah, in the life. Yeah, good thing will come to us. That is the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, I just uh, I just it, it's, it's a personal view, I would say. A compassion <laughs> is almost impossible or almost difficult to, to, to do if you, if you know that whatever you consume has suffered, has suffered uh, in the past and you still consume it. So to me, that no matter what you say about compassion, whether you have been very kind to other beings, but the moment you eat another sentient being, that has been killed by someone else, not done by you, you don't break your precepts, it somehow pains or, or pollutes your compassion. Uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, okay. It is difficult, but not impossible. It is possible. It, yes, indeed, it is very difficult. It is very difficult because what? Why? This is a habit. Since young, when, since when we born, Right, we was one. Then this become the habit, eating, uh, meat, vegetables, or uh, everything. So this is our eating habit. But habit can be changed or not? Can, can, right? So you can spread into uh small, very small steps, step by step, yeah, to achieve your goals, yeah. Perhaps first of all, you don't want to eat certain meat first. You start, yeah, maybe no pork, uh, and then no seafood, yeah, and then no chicken. Gradually, you can get used to uh, the, the your diet without meat. Can be done. Yeah, this is possible because you are aware that it is not compassion to eat others people's, uh, not uh, uh, others beings, uh, meat or life because you're away then you start from a small step and this is possible last comment huh? last comment sorry uh, taking too much of your time uh, as an individual what you say is correct uh, you can move on gradually to become more plant-based <laughs> but as an organization bgf for example should take the lead by not accepting anything that is killed inside the premises. So for that day itself, just that day or that particular meal, everybody who comes in just takes wholesome food, mm -hmm. wholesome plant-based food. That's my opinion. Again, yeah. I, I, I speak for myself, not for the organization <laughs> or things like that. But wouldn't that be ideal or wouldn't that be wonderful for those who are not uh, uh, plant eaters, to experience eating something plant and maybe over time they might change their taste buds might change mm -hmm. and that would be a, a step in the right direction to my mind thank you very much yes, yes. so everything change begins with me so we can start from ourselves and in in our home and then uh, others people uh, will respect you even though uh, you uh, you look so awkward or weird you know, because everyone eat meat, you don't eat, uh, but it's okay because 
because this is our own decision, our right to choose become the vegetarian. Yeah. Yes. Uh, any mic? That myself, I I believe it's attraction rather than promotion. That means if I believe that I eat, I I choose not to eat it, right? It's for my own reasons and because I'm compassionate about animal harm and Thank you. Mm. So uh, uh, now almost the time, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, um, okay, uh, last two slides. All right. So now we shall jump into the practical aspect uh, of uh, integrating the kindness and compassion uh, into our integration with others and uh, be it in our family, our friends, uh, and also even strangers. Uh. So we shall also uncover the inspiring stories by exemplifying the transformative uh, power of kindness. So now how to apply the kindness and compassion in our interaction with others. Uh, just now we say we practice the meditation and mindfulness, right? And to uh, practice and do the compassion uh, action. Uh, speak good words and uh, have good thought yeah, and do good action in our daily life. And this kindness and compassion actually are not abstract the concept uh, to be confined within the walls or our in our meditation hall, as I said, or, or not even only in the temple or not only in the uh, center. Right? So it is all very personal. Yeah, back to us. Right, so we cannot require if, of course, if you are the committee or you are the leaders of an organization, you can promote and uh, lead, yeah, uh, lead by as a, by the example uh, to to become the vegetarian, to practice compassion, speak good words, yeah, uh, and do kind things. So if you are the leader, in your capacity, you can do all wonders. Because you are the boss, right? you have the right and you can make the decision. But if I cannot influence others, I start from myself and then I lead as a good example. So gradually, this good influence will, uh, will harvest, actually. Right? So if it is not in the temple, but at home, we can practice if we cannot eat than every meal, perhaps you can select uh, first and 15 of the lunar month. Uh, so at least you have two days in a month to practice the vegetarian already, right? And then you can select oh, morning breakfast or the dinner, I take vegetarian meal. So you break into a small step, so step by step, one step, one foot sprint, then you can achieve the goal to become the uh, vegetarian. Uh, right. Lastly, this is 
um, the kindness and compassion are living virtues meant to be embodied and expressed in our daily life. We must remember this. Okay, in every interaction we have with our fellow human beings. Yeah, uh, not only human beings, but all sentient beings. Okay, let us begin by exploring how we can apply kindness and compassion uh, in our relationship with others. Uh, those we start from from those closest, dearest to us. All right. So within our family, they are our dearest, uh, the loved one. Uh, right. So kindness and compassion lay the foundation for love and harmony, as we all know. Uh, and Venerable Master Sing Yun teaches that uh, we must approach our family uh, members with empathy, understanding, and uh, willingness to listen deeply. We start from our family. If you think the people around us are very difficult, uh, very difficult people, then we start from ourselves, then we decided want to practice kindness and compassion. Then we start with our family, the person you love. I think you wouldn't hesitate, right? To practice kindness and compassion. From there, yeah, we do this from our for our family first. So with empathy, understanding, and deep listening or active listening. Right. And also, what else? How to treat our family kindness to what? To offer our presence, to offer our presence is very important. Our presence for our family. And then, what else? Presence and then, I present here and then I keep <laughs> shutting my handphone, uh, then I, I'm with you, uh, I sit behind you, uh, and then I'm like this. Right? No, uh, with attention, with attention. Uh, so, presence and attention is um, very important right? so now with uh, presence and attention and also we want to provide support and care support and care right and then after uh, listen your yeah, attention we must act also so we must provide the support and uh, care so now, our family members face a uh, very um, uh, like us, you know, every day the challenging, you know, difficult situation we need to deal with. So by offering the presence and uh, attention and also support, this is the first step that you move forward to practice the kindness and compassion in your uh, family. Of course, the support including what encouragement, right? Uh, offering them comfort and also um, uh, give them a shoulder to lean on. Yeah, yeah. Of course, listening is very important. So by uh, nourishing these qualities within our family, uh, the relationship will become what? Good, right? So we have a very happy family. When I woke up from the home, we feel uh, what? Hope and energetic with positive energy yeah. so we foster an environment of hope and acceptance yeah, nurturing the growth and well-being yeah, for each family members so moving beyond our immediate uh, circles kindness and compassion extend to the interaction with the friends yeah we do the same thing family and then friends and then after that what is it the people around us, the people around us, yeah, including our neighbors, our colleagues, yeah, we practice the uh, the same. Yeah. Now, um, okay, time's up. Let me uh, quickly conclude. Yeah, so uh, in conclusion, the, the journey of developing the kindness and compassion in practice is a profound and transformative. Yeah. And we have explored the importance of the, these virtue the, in the Buddhist practice and recognizing their potential to benefit the, both ourselves and others. 
And also, uh, we have come to understand the kindness and compassion, the difference uh, and the definition of uh, uh, kindness and compassion. We go beyond only the concepts, but they are the principle to be embodied and expressed in our uh, daily life. Yeah, through meditation, mindfulness, and compassionate action, we can actively cultivate this virtue and create a positive impact in our immediate surrounding and a broader world. So, and also we have uh, explored the challenges of extending kindness and compassion to difficult people and situations, acknowledging the needs for empathy and understanding in such circumstances, right? Okay, lastly, uh, we explore how to apply kindness and compassion in our interaction with families and friends and also the stranger. So by nurturing this virtue within our relation, we create the foundation of love support and understanding among us so uh, now uh, this class already uh, ended but our practice just begin you know, we must remind ourselves the kindness and compassion in our daily life and find the pause button which is very important yeah, we always uh, autopilot by our tendency habit to react the uh, negative uh, uh, action or lead or lead by our negative emotion. Yeah. So through the practice of mindfulness, so we can achieve the goal of become more kind and uh, compassion. Right, so uh, Q and A already over just now. <laughs> okay, and uh, one last thing, uh, I would like to uh, introduce the scholar conference, which will be held on twenty fourth of June in Dongzhen Temple. I wish because you all in uh, Malaysia come over Dongzhen Temple, listen to the uh, wise scholar share about uh, more in depth. Uh, the development of Buddhism, especially uh, just now Jackie asked me about the Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan in Buddhism, a uh, few scholars uh, will be coming from Pakistan uh, to tell us the Buddhism in Pakistan. And in fact, they can reflect the life of the Buddha is more near to the Indian uh, India time during the Buddha time through the artifacts that they found in Pakistan. There are more than hundreds of Buddhist archaeological sites yeah, in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So um, the photo in my slide, they are the artifacts of the Buddha statue in uh, Pakistan uh, that I went earlier. So, uh, of course, the call for paper, we, we already uh, in, the deadline already over. Now open for the participant uh, registration, it is free. And uh, this will uh, take place in the Dongzhen Temple on the 24th of June. Uh, you can take a photo uh, of this slide and then uh, scan the QR code for the registration form. And they are English and Chinese uh, category uh, session. Yeah, we will run it concurrently. You can select the English uh, session or the Chinese session. They are uh, academic category in Chinese and English and literature arts category in Chinese and uh, English as well. So there are scholars from uh, Singapore, Taiwan, Pakistan, and uh, from China and Hong Kong, and of course from Malaysia as well. Yeah. Okay. You can uh, read more or know more details in the nearer date uh, through our website or my Facebook, Fo Kwang Fasan website or my Facebook. Yeah, so there will be uh, updates. So to end this session, uh, I would like to uh, transfer the merits and uh, the merits dedication 
uh, everyone can read together uh, to conclude this session. Okay, please join palms. Let's read together. May kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land, and precepts inspire equality and patience. May our humility and gratitude give rise to great wealth. Satu, satu, satu. Thank you.